Hi, welcome. It's 1st of March yesterday. It's the 2nd of March today. So welcome to March. This is an update, a bit of a forecast on what March is bringing uh, energy wise and um, a little bit of inspiration. Just a few words of, of things that have, are coming in for March. So I tuned into March the other day. I sat quietly and I just, just tuned into March. And March was when, what came through was the energy of steadiness just to hold the, the steadiness it's kind of like we're in a boat with a tiller and we're holding it steady we're holding the, the, the boat steady and whatever comes into our boat we throw it out um i've been i've been using this analogy of being in a boat for many many years now i remember back in i think it was 2015 i always remember uh, it was round about that time um, and it was a lot of things going on in my life at that point. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to be in a boat and I'm just going to be serene. I'm just going to be calm. I'm just going to be, you know, sailing my boat in the direction that I want my life to go in. Because it was a lot of stuff going on and I don't want to go into personal stuff. But I steadied my boat and it's now 2014. It was sort of like nearly um, nine years ago. Ish, my maths not very good. Um, it's never my big subject. Um, but about nine years ago, I was in my boat and I've been in that boat ever since. So we were still in the boat, but now our boat is steady. It's not being tossed around. It's steady. A lot of us have now come to this place where we've just said enough is enough. You know, we get bombarded with news and rubbish and stuff that's on the phone and, and constant pinging, you know, notification ping 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 and you like checking the phone oh what's going on oh my god oh my god we could go bonkers and a lot of people are going a little bit crazy i'll be honest with you um i had um a, a few days ago i was driving along to one of my classes and um the amount of people that cut you up impatience coming right up your backside you know pushing you along and I'm doing the speed limit. I'm not going to start to to do what they want me to do. And I'm sticking to the, the speed limit. But anyway, you know, that's what's going on at the moment. So we want to be in our steady boats. Yeah. So that's what the first message came through. And during those um, those steady, the steady boat time, we will get rocked a bit. But we keep steady. We keep holding on to that tiller. It's called a tiller, isn't it? That holds the boat. And we just keep in our 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 focus on where we're going. Where we're going and where you, you are going to is your focus. Not mine, your focus. So it's all about you, nobody else. Um, even if you're in a partnership, you know, if you've got a husband, boyfriend, girlfriend or whatever, we still need to have this energy of feeling steady so that we can be the calm in the, in the storms and things like that. So during this time there will be waves this is what also came in during this time there will be waves of vibration coming in at us and this vibration is coming from the universe and it's flowing with the rhythms of the universe so it's coming towards us in waves and this morning uh, when i woke up i didn't have a very good night i got i woke up at two o'clock i had terrible heartburn anyway I got up and I had a little bit of bicarbonate of soda in water and it eased the pain. It was because I'd had a dinner late, quite my late uh, late dinner, uh, which I don't normally do. But um, so I got heartburn at two o'clock. So I managed to get back to sleep and I woke up around about, I don't know, six o'clock, something like that. And I wrote down what I came, what came out of it. So I, I thought what well, what was coming down, what the download was coming down, lots of silver energy coming down. And as I looked outside, so it must have been a little bit late, it must have been about seven o'clock, the curtains were open and I could see the, the clouds parting and they were like silver clouds. And all I could see was this blue energy. And I was like, oh, that's nice. That's a little bit of clearing here. And it felt good, even though it's bitterly cold here in the UK still. It's really still cold. Um, it felt like there's going to be these waves of, of energy that's going to bring in this feeling of well-being. It's going to bring in confidence. It's going to bring in um, uh, up in our self-esteem, making us feel better. Because I don't know about you, but sometimes in the morning you can feel a bit low. You're, 
um, you know, when you teach yoga, you work with these different energies and there's, there's the energy that's very excessive. You get these people that are very nervous and very stressed. Or you get the energy of like feeling, oh, I can't be bothered. I've got no no drive, no determination. And then you get the balance. So that's what we're trying to get to is the balance. So when we wake up in the morning, we kind of feel a bit lethargic. So our, our chi, our energy could be a bit depleted. That is quite normal. So, you know, don't get up and go, oh, you know, this is terrible. I'm feeling rubbish. Try not to go into that energy. Try to... Just breathe when you get out of bed and just breathe. And I talked about the ma, the space, the silence, having times where you're not checking the phone all the time, you know, the notifications that ping off. Do you nearly, nearly need to go to the phone? I'm pointing over there because my phone's over there. Keep going to the phone and checking these constant ping, ping, ping. I always remember going to a lecture many, many years ago to a professor and he was talking about... Um, beating your own drum you know not doing things that other people do and and but their beck and call all the time you know to to have that space and it's developing patience within yourself and what he spoke about he he gave us a scenario and he said right you're upstairs in your house and the phone rings and I was talking about the home phone now a lot of people don't have home phones anymore um I have one and it's it's not plugged in but sometimes I've got it there just in an emergency. So if the power went down and we could still use landline, although they're talking about cutting that off, aren't they? Which is a bit worrying. Um, I've still got a phone bit of communication. Whether it would work, I really don't know. But anyway, that's beside the point. But he would, he said, the phone's ring. The scenario is you're upstairs, maybe a hoovering or something. You hear the phone ringing, and you know there's an answering machine on the phone. So what? What do you do? Do you do a turn the hoover off, you run downstairs, you almost like fall down the stairs to get to the phone, hello, 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 and then the person's gone, and you're like, oh, you know, don't know who that is, and then you're ringing it back, hello, hello, oh, hi, hi, you phoned me, that kind of energy, or do you be, phone's ringing, you just carry on hooving, thinking, well, the answer machine will get it, and I will return the call when I feel like it. What do you do? I used to do B. I used to think, oh, the, the answer machine will get it. If it's important, that person will either leave a message or they'll phone me back. I didn't go down there checking the phone and, and ringing them back and pestering them and, and all of that. That is the energy we need to get out of. And we need to get out into the energy of feeling that we have that patience to, um, you know, have time for us. So we're not all back, back and call of that phone because it is getting that way. I was talking to a client today and we were talking about reading, the energy of reading. Now, I've got a couple of friends who do a lot of reading. And one of particular person runs a book club. And that's brilliant because it's encouraging people to read. So, you know, you've got that task of this is the book we've got for the month and we've got to read it. Sometimes that, again, can be a little bit ordered because it might be something that you don't particularly want to read. And as you get older, um, how, how many years have I got left on this planet kind of thing? And how many books do I want to read that are the books that I want to read? So I kind of have to work that one out. But yeah, the energy of reading, you know, how many of us actually sit down with a book and read, and read it? My One of my goals this year was to read a book a month. I read one in January. I read a few in February, but it was more flicking through the book and reading bits of the book. So it wasn't actually reading a book. One of the books I was reading was this book. I've got it here. And this is useful. This is useful reading. This is what I'm talking about. The energy of a book club, which is more about social pleasure, which is brilliant. I've got no problem with that whatsoever. And then the, and then the reading that is studying and giving you knowledge. And this was the book that I'm, I've been reading in February. And this is my allotment month by month book. This is my Bible. Um, I love this book. And I've got inside this book is my little um, allotment um, notebook. So every year I write down every month what I sow, when I sowed it, how it developed, did it crop. I'm not going to write down how many kilos I got. Um, I'd like to do that at some point, but I've not done that. But this was my book that I, re I read in February. And last night, um, before I went to, to bed, 
I got into bed, had a nice, uh, some nice warm hot tea, and I read the March um, part of this book. It's really interesting and really useful. And so I, I put a plan together today and I've ordered my seeds that I needed. Um, I'm going to talk about seeds in a moment. So I ordered my seeds. One of the seeds, uh, seed companies I use in particular is a company called um, Premier Seeds. Um, Premier is like online, Premier Online Seeds or something like that. I use them quite a lot because one, they do quite have quite a lot of organic seeds. Two, their seeds are very, very reasonable. And um, I've used them and they're very good quality and they're fresh and, and I use them all the time. Premier Seed Direct, that's it. Okay, what came through the door, and this is just talking about saving money, was this catalogue that I got yesterday and it's Chilton Seeds. And there's nothing wrong with this company, they're amazing. Although they're a bit expensive, their their um, uh, postage was about three pounds. Each of the packets of seeds are about two pound, three pounds, something like that. It's so expensive seeds are now, and so I, I I went through this as well, and I pulled out some of the things that I wanted to grow. So a couple of things that we can grow in February, at February end of February, beginning of March, is we can we can plant things like leeks, parsnips. Um, broad beans, um, some winter lettuces, providing they're undercover, maybe. And um, so I went through this book, this magazine, and it's got a few seeds. That I thought, oh, they that looks interesting, and it fits in well with my plan of what I want to grow. And I looked at the prices, and I worked out how much it was going to cost for the seeds I wanted from this book, and it was about twenty twenty two pounds. But then with postage, it was about twenty five quid. So I went on Premier Seeds Direct and I ordered the same seeds. So they were the ones that were going to, you know, the, the, the same variety, but not from here. And they came to £11. The only thing I couldn't get was some peas. Um, so I'm going to look up for those, um, see if I can find them at the garden centre, because I'm not paying £2.50 for a pack of seeds and then £3 postage. So they were, the, they were the, just these peas that I couldn't get. So yeah, um, so I'm growing, doing lots and lots of sow seed sowing. I'm going to be doing a lot more of that tomorrow. Um, so yeah, so going back to March, what else did I get coming through? Um, yeah, I also got um, the energy of self-sufficiency. That was the other word that came in, self-sufficiency. And obviously growing your own even if you only get a tub on your windowsill and you grow some maybe rocket or salad one thing we can grow right now and we can get lots of health benefits from are microgreens um many many years ago i used to have a sprouting tower uh, i've got it downstairs i don't want to bring it up because it's got seeds and things in so it was a tower with three or four little compartments and you put your seeds in and you water them and you get your microgreens. Bring that back and, and go with that because it's something that we're always going to have there as our little bit of self-sufficiency. The I don't want to go to political. I don't want to go into that. But there are um, signs that we could have shortages of fruit and veg, really, because let's be honest and let's be realistic. We've had a hell of a lot of floods in the UK, an awful lot of flooding. And those and those guard, those fields can't be planted on. They're, they're literally sodden in water. I know there are areas which haven't been uh, suffered by floods, but it's a sign that, you know, we could have a few problems in the spring when we have what's called the hungry gap. We might not have so many veg. I noticed yesterday in Tesco's, there was a lots of gaps in the shelves of certain produce. I mean, there was a, there was massive lots of food. There was nobody's going to go hungry, that's for sure. But if you want really good, um, healthy greens, grow yourself some seeds in these little towers. Um, I bought one. Well, I had one many many years ago, and I had I had a lodger here, and um, we were using it, and it got broken, it got dropped, and it it cracked. So I I never got a new one, and then. The other week, I thought, you know what, I'm going to buy another tower. I must admit, it's not such good quality as the one I originally had, but it's OK. And I've been growing mustard seeds, radish seeds and some alfalfa. 
and um, they've grown really well. And I have them with my, you know, with my lunch and my sandwich. And they're very, very high in um, fibre, in vitamins and minerals. So that's something that I would suggest you do for March. One thing is really good is broccoli seeds. They grow lovely. And um, basil seeds as well. So that was one of the things I was talking about was the microgreens. Um, yeah, what else did I write down? The silver energy coming in. Because it's all got downloaded this morning. Um, yeah, there's a lot of upgrades for everybody. And also don't infer interfere with that upgrade. So if somebody is, is uh, I've got, it's got a lot of changes going on in their life, you know, just, just support them, but don't interfere. Don't say things like, oh, do you really think you ought to do that? Or do you think you should do that? No, no, let them work it out for themselves. There's something in healing as a, as a, a therapist myself. If somebody comes here and they pay me to do some reflexology and they ask me for advice, I will just go into what, what's going on and just support them, but not say, oh, I think you should do this. Even as a therapist, I don't think that's ethical to actually do that. And I feel like I'm preaching at the moment, which I'm not. But I want you to understand that everybody has their own path, their own soul path, and they should be able to be able to do go on that path because we all have a soul's purpose in this life. Um, I was talking to somebody a couple of days ago and, you know, it, we were talking about um, what is what would you have done if you hadn't done what you're doing now? So, for example, say you were, um, um, I don't know, a, a builder on a building site and it wasn't particularly what you wanted to do, but your family, it was a family business and you kind of expected to to become a builder and I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with that if that's what you want to do that's fine but deep down in your purpose you wanted to be I don't know you want to be a falconry person you know who does who does works with birds of prey um you know and and you were never allowed to do that then you're kind of missing out of your own it's not fulfilling your soul and your spirit really is it I I've always been quite blessed with my my life um I rebelled a little bit when I was 17. I was I, I trained as a secretary, um, something that my father and mother decided that was the best thing for me to do. I wanted to go to art college and I was never I never went. So I felt that that was I was deprived of that. But somehow it didn't matter because a few years later I found yoga. I found my path of what I wanted to do and I've stayed on that path and I've been been very blessed to being given more and more information and more knowledge to fulfill my own soul's path so I do what I'm doing right now feels right and I feel that I'm supported by my guides and my angels and people that are around me and I'm hoping that by doing that I get that in that energy of empowering other people to help them find their own path so when somebody says to me oh, what do you think I should do? I've got this crossroads in my life and I could do this, I could do that. What What do you think I should do? And I, it's a case of empowering them to say, well, what is right for you? What is right for you? You meditate on it. And if you just close your eyes right now and ask your own higher self, your wise lady or gentleman, that wise person inside of us, inside of you, what you need to do right now you will get guidance honestly I'm sure I'm really sure that you will get that I don't know anybody that I've worked with that says oh I, I don't know I'm not getting anything I mean sometimes some people do that I'm going oh I don't know I don't really know what I want to do I've lost my job um I've ended a relationship I, I don't know where I'm going that sometimes can happen and we can go into a bit of a dark space but I tell you what I've been there a few times and it's really shaken me up and I really know what I want now. I don't want to have that in my life. I don't want that confusion and not knowing. And really, it's quite easy just to go into your heart. And I think that's what March is all about. So if you find suddenly something changes that you, um, you know, in your life, something really changes, just trust it's happening 
for you, not to you. That's a bit of a, a, an old thing that people tell you, isn't it? Oh, well, it's, it's happening to you. Um, but it's, it's actually happening for your own soul's growth. And you can look back in a few years time and go, actually, you know what? What happened there was meant to happen. And look at me now. I'm in this place and things are good. And that's what March really, I feel, is bringing in for us. Um, last month, I talked about the da the daffodils. Um, I planted all those daffodils, by the way. They're not coming up yet. They're not flowering because they're way behind the ones that are in my garden. But I'll have like a, a little second flowering. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look around sometimes at supermarkets. They have lots and lots of daffodils sort of end of, of line. Um, I saw some at Tesco's yesterday, but when I went over, they'd all gone. Somebody's emptied the shelves. And um, so to plant some some more up for next year or make a note in my diary to put some more in. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's about it, really. It's all about vibration. Writing, reading. I'm planning on doing some um, morning pages every morning where I just sit for half an hour and just write down what's coming in. That's what I did this morning. And I got a load of garbage. <laughs> Well, I thought it was a load of rubbish, <laughs> but no, it, you know, it's interesting because it's all about that green energy. Yeah, the green energy in March. It's about the green energy and the yellow energy. So the, the daffodils, the greenness, the, the, the cleansing within us, you know, it's about times for detoxing and cleansing. So get yourself some dandelions, um, get yourself some nettles. Um, there's a sticky weed that are cleavers that you can eat. They're all they're all herbs that you can eat or plants or weeds, whatever you call them. Um, but be careful. Make sure you are picking dandelions, um, nettles and cleavers. Um, if you don't know what they are, don't pick them, basically. Um, but you can you can dry them. You can make them into a tea. You can infuse them. That's one of the videos I'm going to put together next week. So. I'm going to have to go because it's now half past one and I've got to go to a meeting for two o'clock and um, just want to get myself changed and get ready for that. And so happy March, everybody. Have a lovely, lovely month. I will see you in this March. As I say, I've got in my little book here. I've got some videos um, that I want to put together for you. Probably go through some of the micro seeds for the first thing and something about the, the green um Green detoxin kind of work together. Okay, so happy March. Have a lovely Saturday and I'll see you soon. Lots of love. Bye bye. Bye.